its news reports that FHA financial reserves are dropping, the agency has announced a series of fee increases to borrowers. So Megan, can you just take a minute and explain what fees are going up, by how much, and for what reason? So on April 1st, all FHA loans will see an annual premium increase of 0.10%. Now the annual premium, as you know, is actually paid on a monthly basis by borrowers. And it's currently set between 1.1 and 1.15. So the increase will be of 0.10%. And that, will be, that is due to Congress requiring them to increase the premium in the payroll extension tax bill that was passed in December. They increased the fees for Freddie and Fannie, and they also required that FHA increase their fees by 0.10%. In addition, FHA has announced that for jumbo loans, for those loans over 625.5, they will require an additional increase in the annual premium of 0.25 for a total increase for jumbo loans of 0.35. But the 0.25 doesn't take effect until June 1st, so there's a little bit of a delay. Everyone has the 0.10 in April, on April 1st, and then on June 1st, the jumbo rates will go even higher. Also on April 1st, FHA is increasing the upfront premium by 0.75%. The current upfront premium is, is 1%, so it will go to 1.75. This is being done just to increase the financial stability and solvency of the FHA fund. And so on April 1, these will go up. The upfront premium, as you know, is paid at the closing table, but the good news is it can be financed into the loan. And so because that rate can be financed into the loan, FHA expects the average cost to an FHA borrower to be $5 a month of that increase. So as a result of these increases, the agency can expect to see an increase in its you know, funds by maybe a, a billion dollars or so. Can you just take a minute and explain to us you know, what is the state of FHA's finances? So let me talk a little bit about how the Mutual Mortgage Insurance Fund works. All of the money that comes into the Mutual Mortgage Insurance Fund is, is self-funded. It comes from the premiums paid by the borrowers. There's no congressional money going in there, no taxpayer money, no appropriation. It's all paid for with the premiums by the borrowers. FHA has sort of two bank accounts. I kind of think of the first one as the checking account, which they call the financing account. That holds enough premiums to pay all expected claims and fees for 30 years worth, their entire portfolio's worth of claims and losses. All 30 years worth is in that checking account. And that checking account has $33.7 billion in it. So whenever you hear people say that, oh, FHA is going bankrupt, they, they have $33.7 billion to pay 30 years' worth of reserves. In comparison, banks only have to hold one year worth of reserves, but FHA has 30. They also have a savings account, and in that savings account go all the excess premiums, and that's to pay all unexpected claims and losses that they may have. Congress requires them to keep 2% uh, in that capital reserves account. Two percent of all the insurance they have in force is supposed to be in that account. <clears throat> Since 2009, they have not been at the two percent ratio. Once the housing crisis hit, they had to transfer a lot more money out of the cash reserves into the checking account, and they, they fell below the two percent ratio. Why are the capital reserves low? Why is that two percent low? There's two factors that determine how much money FHA has to have in their checking account in that 30 years worth of reserves. The first factor is housing prices. As housing prices fall, they have to add more money to those reserves because if they had a claim on that, on that mortgage, the value of the mortgage is going to be less perhaps than the value of the house or certainly less than was originally anticipated. So they had to transfer money out of the 2%, the, the savings account, into that checking account to have the full 30 years worth of reserves. So when homes are underwater, FHA needs to have more money in there. The second factor is foreclosure rates. As foreclosures increase due to the housing crisis or unemployment or whatever other factors, FHA will predict a higher rate of claims, and so they will put more money into that checking account. Over the last year, FHA's foreclosure rate has risen dramatically. Loans made between 2006 and 2008, when FHA was really the lender of last resort, have been performing very badly. The good news is that the loans that they've been making from the second half of 2009 through today have never been better. Those loans, even their early default levels, are very low compared to all of FHA's previous books of business. So for FY12, the current fiscal year that we are in, FHA, for the first time in their 78-year history, estimated that they would not have enough in that checking account to pay 30 years' worth of claims. They expect in this year that they will have to take all of the money that they have in their savings account, put it in that checking account, and they still will need another $668 million to fund 30 years' worth of claims. 
Again, this is not to say they're bankrupt. They probably have 28 years worth of reserves, but they're supposed to keep 30 years and that's what they want to keep at that level. So what have they done? They don't want to request a federal bailout, so instead they are raising the premium. They expect that the income raised from, the, from those premium increases that we just talked about will be $1 billion in FY12 and FY13. So that $1 billion will help to cover the shortfall. HUD also received $1 billion in the settlement with the banks over the robo signing that was just announced um, a week or so ago. The bottom line is that FHA will not need a federal bailout. The money that they received from the settlement with the banks combined with the money they're going to receive from increasing the premiums will be enough to help them weather this crisis. In fact, FHA believes that by, by FY13, which is the next fiscal year, which starts in October, they will add $8 billion back into that savings account. They'll start to replenish that savings account, the 2% ratio that you hear about. And by FY15, they expect to be back over the 2%.